Hi everyone, this video is going to introduce us to some of the most commonly used burrs. Our main focus is going to be on restorative burrs, but I also want to show you the variety that is out there. We have finishing burrs, burrs specific for different materials, as well as some diamond burrs. I also have a variety of hand pieces here, well hand pieces and their attachments. So you can see what these burrs will be fitting into when we set these up for the operator. So let's start with some of these burrs on the outsides of the tray here. This here is a set of polishing burrs, specifically for porcelain. These are also extra oral burrs. And you don't have to memorize these for our class, but this is just to give you a, a look at the different variety. These are extra oral burrs because they fit into the straight attachment. And remember, the straight attachment on the low speed is used extra orally due to the shape. It doesn't conform to the shape of the oral cavity easily. So these are porcelain polishing burrs. These are also porcelain polishing burrs. But these are smaller, so they can be used intraorally. If you notice the attachment style of this burr is a latch style. And we'll talk about more, we'll talk more about the different styles in a few seconds. But there's just such a wide selection of burrs out there for the dentists to choose. But they will have their favorites. They'll have their favorite brand, their favorite shapes, their favorite materials. So once you get into an office, once you start working in an office, concentrate on memorizing what they have. They will rarely change what they use because they have things that work for them. Here's another example of a set. This one is specific for acrylic, polishing acrylic dentures, partials, retainers, anything made out of acrylic. Of course, due to the size of these burrs, as well as the attachment style, these are used extra orally as well. They go into the straight attachment of the low speed. So just an illustration of different styles. These in this setup happen to be diamond burrs. When you get a close-up view of the diamond burrs, notice the rough surface. Now diamond burrs are made for several different purposes. These are preparation burrs, so they're used to reduce the tooth quickly. Other diamond burrs have a finer texture to them, smaller diamonds, to have a polishing effect on different dental materials. But we have a variety of shapes, and again the doctor will choose the shapes that work best for the task they are doing. The last burr block I have here are finishing burrs. When you look at finishing burrs, we have carbide finishing burrs that have more flutes, these grooves, the patterned grooves that you see on the burrs. The more flutes, the more polishing capabilities that burr has. We also have some rubber points in here the front has some white rubber polishing points. You can also have diamond finishing burrs. So finishing burrs act on the restoration. They will finish composites, porcelain, ceramic, and that's depending on what the burr material is made out of. Our concentration 
really for this video are on restorative burrs. So here we have a variety of restorative burrs and we'll go through the different burr shapes so you can see what the different shapes are so we can tell the difference between an inverted cone and a round burr or a round burr from a pear or a tapered burr from a straight burr. And we'll also look at the shanks, the attachment ends. So we're gonna look at those a little more closely in just a minute, but I wanna show you also the different hand pieces. Here we have a high-speed hand piece. High-speed hand pieces are one unit from the coupler where they attach to the hoses all the way to the working end. This one has a push button locking mechanism. So to open up the lock, you would press firmly on the back of the head and that will open up the mechanism inside. So the mechanism inside is automatically in a closed position. Pushing on the back of the handpiece opens up the mechanism to receive the burr. When you release, the mechanism closes. And this is a friction grip attachment. So the only burrs that will fit into the high-speed handpiece are friction grip burrs. This here is a contra angle. It is attached to the low-speed motor. And this particular model just snaps together. Just press it firmly. The attachment here to get a burr into this handpiece has a latch mechanism. So we'll use a latch style attachment, also called an RA, right angle attachment. Swing the latch to the side. It will open up the locking mechanism so you can insert your burr. And then you swing the lock closed to secure the burr in place. So the only burrs that will fit in this handpiece are latch style burrs, latch style attachments. This next attachment is a straight attachment. This also gets attached to the low speed motor. So unless you have two motors on your setup, you can only attach or use one at a time, but you can switch them out very easily. The only burrs that will fit into this large opening here are your straight attachment burrs. Anything else, latch style and friction grip are too small, they will actually fall right into the opening here. So let's look at these different burr attachments. So I've got my three different working ends of the hand pieces. I've got high speed which requires friction grip, low speed contra angle which requires a latch style, and low speed straight attachment which requires a straight burr. So here's the difference between all of these. I'm going to pull a friction grip out. Friction grip, so working end is on the left, where it attaches to the hand pieces on the right. Then we have a latch style burr. This is actually a, a mandrel. Let me get a burr. Compare apples to apples. So friction grip, latch style, working end, where it attaches to the handpiece. And lastly, the straight shank. Obviously much larger than the other two. So this is a laboratory burr, also mandrels 
will come in this size as well. So you can get burrs and mandrels to fit any hand piece. And just the sizes will differ. Let me hold this up a little closer. So you can have a better comparison of Let's keep the straight one out of it for right now. And we're just comparing the friction grip with the latch attachment. So for demonstration purposes, trying to fit these into the hand pieces, I've got the appropriate friction grip burr for the high speed. I'm going to press on the back of the handpiece and then insert the burr into the handpiece. This is not in all the way, so that would be very unsafe for your patient. The burr could come flying out. I'm going to press a little more firmly on that locking mechanism and then push the burr in further. And you can see where the shank starts to taper at the neck, it should go in to that point or to that area of the burr. Now that's true for this typical operatory burr. There are longer length shanks, surgical length, that it would stick out a bit further. Compare this to the latch style. Latch style is just too big. There's no way it's going to fit in here. So you just cannot get the friction grip handpiece to hold a latch burr. It just won't work. Same thing with the straight attachment. It's just much too large. So only friction grips. That'll help you out picking the correct style of attachment. Only friction grip will fit into the high speed. When you look at the contra angle. Let's open up the locking mechanism, swinging it open. Now, because this opening is larger, I could fit the friction grip in. It'll go in the hole, but you see how loose it is. It just falls in there. And when I close the latch, there's nothing for the locking mechanism to grip onto. So this is just going to fall right out. The only style that will fit, I can't put the straight in, it's too large for this hole. So the only attachment style that will fit in here is the latch style. I'm going to slip that in. I'm going to turn it slightly. I've got to hold the end. Turn it slightly, it's going to slip into place. Then I'll lock it and make sure it's secure. Always check your burrs. You want to make sure the burr is secure. If it's loose, it could fly out during use and injure the patient. And lastly, we have the straight attachment. What will fit in this particular straight attachment? And here's the locking mechanism for this one. This one has a swinging lock. I'm going to swing that open. I'm going to insert my burr, possibly. <laughs> Sometimes the, they stick a little bit. Let's try this one. Make sure I don't have it the wrong way. All right, technical difficulties with this. Let's switch over to the other straight attachment. A little bit different locking mechanism. This has a collar style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grip this collar, this ring, tightly. I'm going to twist to the right and push down. 
It takes some finger muscles to do this, and when you have it in the correct position, it stays. So when the collar is twisted to the right and down, it's open. So this straight attachment will go right, will receive the straight shank. To lock it, grip your collar, twist to the left and up. And now it's secure. So I can put my lab attachments or my straight attachments in there, whether it's a burr or a mandrel, that does not matter. As long as it has the proper shank, the proper attachment. The other thing that will fit into this handpiece, this attachment, is a profi angle. This particular attachment will not be able to receive a profi angle just based on the design of it. But this one will. So when I have this open, I'm going to take my profi angle and on this particular model, now they're all different. Uh, you just have to get used to the one that you're going to be working with. This little bump that you see here, line that up with your notch on your profi angle and then lock it into place. Give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. Unlock and then you can remove it. So those are the different hand pieces and attachments along with the style of burr attachment. Friction grip versus so friction grip versus, I've got two of them here, latch style versus straight. So that's half of the challenge is selecting the proper attachment style for the handpiece you're assembling. There's another right angle. I also have on here the two different styles of profi angles. You could have a metal reusable profi angle. The only thing you would switch out is this disposable cup. You would remove it after your patient care for this properly. These can be disassembled. They need to be lubricated and cleaned properly. Most offices, instead of spending the time to work with these properly, most offices will use a disposable profi angle that you can just throw out after each use. It saves you time. Maybe a little bit more expensive in the long run, but you know what they say, time is money. So the bigger challenge here is to recognize these restorative burrs. So for this class, you really just have to memorize a few of these different series of burrs. You're going to memorize round, inverted cone, pair, straight, tapered, straight cross cut, tapered cross cut, and pair, if I didn't mention pair yet. So when we look at these, let's take a look at these a little closely. What we're seeing here, let's compare round burrs. So I see one round burr back here. So the working end of the burr is round, or it looks like a ball. The series, so the series are numbered. Round burrs are 10 and below. They could be quarter, half, one through eight and 10. Compare next to it 
right next to it, we have a pair. Let me pull out two pairs because one is a long pair. For your skill, don't worry if you pull out a long pair or a regular pair. I'm not going to get that particular, but just be aware there are different pairs. They like to roll around a bit. So let's hold these up a little closer. I got a little mixed up here. So the top burr is a round burr. The middle burr is a regular pair. And the bottom burr is a long pair. When you compare round to pair, the pairs are wider at the top. They have a rounded top, but they're wider at the top, whereas the round is wider in the middle. Your pair series are in the 300 range. Uh, 333, 334, 331. So your pair series are in the 300s. The numbers, the number series works with the smaller the number in that series, the smaller the burr. So a size 4 is smaller than a size 10. For pair burrs, a 331 is smaller than a 333. The next one that can sometimes get confused with rounds and pairs is the inverted cone. Let me pull out that three inverted cones. So with the inverted cones, these are all inverted cones. You look at the working end. To me, what they look like is a pear that's been chopped off at the top. So instead of having a rounded top, like a pear would have, it has a flat top. So these are inverted cones. What that means, inverted upside down, these burrs are wider at the top, at the very tip, than they are where they attach to the neck. So they start out narrow at the neck and they get wider near the top. So these are three inverted cones. This series number is in the 30s range. 33 and a half, 34, 35. So your inverted cones are in the 30s. So I'm going to try to arrange these round pair I use a smaller one, inverted cone. I'm going to move this one over here. This one's inverted cone also. So in the back, we have a round burr, a pear, an inverted cone, and another inverted cone. The other styles, let's look at straight plain and straight cross cut. And they're right next to each other. So 
So simplifying the number system, the straight fissure plane, and I'm gonna have to look at these a little closer, I'm pulling them right up next to my eyes. That's actually a tapered one. <laughs> so even for me, I gotta look at them very closely. Here is a, straight plane. There we go. It's long, but it's still a straight plane. And a straight cross cut. When you're looking at these burrs, so they have the same shape. Gosh, they're really hard to hold. I apologize for how rough it is. The one on top is a straight fissure plane. The one on the bottom is a straight fissure cross cut. Cross cut, if you look closely at, at the burrs, the cross cut has little notches removed from the pleats or the flutes. Cross cuts with those notches in them cut much more quickly than a plain cut. The series numbers, straight plain cut are in the 50s, 56, 57, 58. Straight cross cut series are in the 550s, 556, 557, 558. So those are your straight, plain cut, straight, cross cut. Next we have tapered, plain, and tapered cross cut. I'm just taking a, a quick look, make sure I can see what I'm looking at here. Tapered plane and tapered cross cut. This is a good one here. So these next two burrs, <laughs> they're so hard to handle. These next two burrs are tapered burrs. Let's hold them this way. So tapered burrs become more narrow at the tip. They start out wide near the neck and they get more narrow at the tip. These of course are different sizes, but one has cross cuts. So one of these burrs has notches cut out on the flutes. If I rotate them around, you can probably see which ones they are. So it's the one on the left that has cross cuts. The one on the right is plain. It's a tapered plain cut. The series for these the plain cut, tapered plain cut, is in the 100s. Uh, 169, 170, 171. The tapered cross cut is in the 700s. I believe it even goes to 699. But if you just remember 700s, like 701, 702, that is your tapered fissure cross cut burr. So I'm going to put these back into the holder here. I'm going to get try to get these all in.
Now in your office, you'll arrange these to suit your needs, but they get all mixed up here in class and that's okay. It gives us good practice for memorizing these shapes. So in the back corner here, this would be a tapered cross cut. That's your 700 series, 701, 702. The one right next to it is a tapered plane. That would be in the 100s, 169, 170, 171. Next to that one, we have a tapered plane. So this is a tapered long. This is a regular tapered. Here we have a straight plane cut. Try and see a little closer. This one is a straight cross cut pair back here inverted cone another inverted cone smaller size straight plain cut round in the front oh, I apologize if it went blurry there Try to back it up a little bit in the front, we have a pair, 300 series, 333, 334. Straight cross cut. So 500 series, 556, 557, around there. We have a tapered plane next to a tapered cross cut. Inverted cone. Oh, going back to the series 100. Uh, so 170, 171, 700 series, really 699, uh, 701, 702. Inverted cone, 30s, you know, 34. Tapered cross cut again, straight, plain, 50s, 56, 57. Tapered right here, oh, off screen a little bit. Tapered plain pair. This just happens to be a long pair. And next to it, we have an inverted cone. Smallest inverted cone, 33 and a half, I believe that one is. So those are the common restorative burrs. When you do your handpiece assembly, there's really only two points when it comes to recognizing the burr shapes. I'll ask you to assemble a certain number in the handpiece and then a certain number in the contra angle. And you have to select the proper shape along with the proper attachment style. You know, if I say attach a 333 into the contra angle, you first have to find one of the larger latch style burrs. Then you can concentrate on what shape is a 333. And that's your pair. You've got a straight plane, you've got a pair in the middle and a round. So you would select this one here to put a 333 into the low speed contra angle. I would do the same thing for the high speed. I might ask you to put oh, a number six in the high speed. Number six is your round series. If you see, there are two round burrs back here. For skill purposes, it does not matter which one you pick. Even I have a hard time telling. All I know is this one's larger. 
know, this one could be a four, this one could be a six, or this might be an eight and that a six. So it doesn't matter. As long as you get the right shape for your skill, you'll be fine. If I ask for a 171, that's a tapered plane. So that would be this one here. Uh, don't try to memorize the locations of the burrs. They will get all jumbled up. I might not be using the same burr blocks. You know, it's, they're easy to mix up and rearrange. Memorize the shape and match it to their series numbers. All right, thank you for watching. I hope that has helped you understand burrs a little better.